Caps is basically played with a pair of dice, okay? Where die one is one, two, three, four, five, six, and die two is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, follow me so far? Six sided die, you have a one, you have any of those numbers on those die. So if you roll the dice, you can get a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, or a seven this way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, don't freeze up on me yet. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, and a ten. This is a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is a seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or a twelve. Okay. In the game of craps, the main number you want to stay away from is a seven. So basically the probability of you rolling a seven is six out of thirty-six outcomes, which comes to a one in thirty-six or one in six chance of you rolling a seven. Are you following my adventure so far? Okay. So um, I'm going to circle these. And I'm going to circle these. <clears throat> okay, so if I count the number of purple circled numbers, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I have 21 out of 36 numbers. Did I count those right? Let me just double check, make sure I have them listed. Oops, I need to have this eight in here. I have to have this eight, nine, ten in there. So there's three more. That's 24 out of 36. 24 out of 36 comes to. Let's see, 12 goes in the top twice. 12. Goes, you have a two-thirds chance that any of those numbers is, are going to happen. So the probability of rolling any of those purple numbers is a two-thirds chance. Okay, those are technically going to be winning numbers in which this story is going to convey to you. Okay. Does everyone understand what I'm talking about when I say the game of craps? Okay. I have a PowerPoint that goes with this, so I have a craps table and all that kind of stuff. This will be a real life application of, of what we have, and it's recorded, and you guys are going to like this story. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, this was a very unlikely event, but it happened in 1997 to me. Okay? So, the precursor to this story, I was teaching in Vegas. Okay? A gambling town. Agree? Teaching in Vegas, the guy across the hall from me, he and I both got hired at the same time. His name is George. So, so far in the story is myself and George. So, follow it. George comes to me, and it's right after Valentine's Day, and he goes, Hey, you got to come out with my brother in law and I tonight. Friday night. Okay. Like, you know, I kind of left a little too much money at the casino. I don't really have that much. Trust me. Come out. My brother in law will cover the whole night. All right, so I get over to George's house, and his brother-in-law, I'm going to paint you the picture, I'm not trying to stereotype, is about, looks like, best recollection is he looks like Danny DeVito, okay? Kind of a short, squatty, black-haired guy. And he's wearing a pair of jean shorts, because that was popular back then, don't judge. He's got a white button-down shirt on that's button, unbuttoned down to almost his belly button. He's got more chest hair than you can imagine. And he has this gold medallion fighting to come out of the chest hair hanging around his neck. Okay, so you're getting a visual of this? 
and he is down on the floor, and he has hundreds or piles of hundreds of hundred dollar bills all on the floor. And he's just sitting there and he's doing one of these and he's doing it. And I walk in, I'm like, oh my gosh, did you win? No, about 27,000 down right now. Oh. So, George's brother in law, I don't remember what his name was. I'm sorry. But George is like, yeah, hey, he goes, stir up, let's, we're going to go, we're going to play crafts. And what's going to happen is either me or you are going to roll the dice for him while he bets. We don't have to bet a thing. Oh. Well, meanwhile, as George is telling me kind of the rules of the night, this guy is taking these stacks of hundreds and rolling them up into a wise guy wads of hundreds, putting a rubber band around it. And he gives me two wise guy rolls of hundreds that I put in my front two pockets. George gets some, and this guy stacks right up and hang on. He goes back to the room that he was staying in at George's apartment, comes out, and he said, just in case, he had a cashier's check for $100,000. Meaning, you go to the casino, give him that check, they're going to give him $100,000. Okay? Like, I got more money in my two front pockets than I probably make in a school year, you know, as a second year teacher. So we're going to go to the casino. We're going to play the game of crafts. Now, who's all in this story so far? Me? George? And? George's brother-in-law. That I can't remember his name. All right. So we're going to go play crafts. Now, his brother-in-law has a very thick... East Coast accent. The brother-in-law, his main job is he is the number one rose distributor for the entire Northeast portion of the United States. So we're talking like Maine, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, you know, all those states back there. And when did this story take place? 97, and it was the weekend after which holiday? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. What happens on Valentine's Day? Lots of people are given roses. Rose production, rose sales is like through the roof. Okay. So his brother-in-law says to me, you going to throw the bones for me? Basically talk like that. I'm looking at George. I'm like, I don't know what throw the bones means. George's like, roll the dice. Yeah, yeah, I'll throw the bones for you. So we're going to walk up to the craft table. So basically, the payout on if a six or an eight comes up on the craft table, which are here and here, here and here, here, if you bet $6, you win $5. The payout, if the five or nine hits, you bet. Um, or let me go back. To pay out to get roll a six or eight, you bet five dollars to win six. You to roll a five or nine, you bet two dollars to win three. To roll a four or ten, you bet one dollar to win two. So basically the four and ten doubles your bet. Everything else is a little bit of a ratio. Okay? And I just showed you this is the table that I so unneatly drew. And those are all the combinations of the dice. So the smallest number you can roll is a 2. The largest number you can roll is a 12. Okay. The most occurring number is the 7. That happens 6 out of 36 times, and it's a 1 in, 36, or one in 6 probability. Okay. So we are going to go to this table, and you can bet anywhere on this table you want. Okay. But the main thing is, if you are going to have a person roll the dice, or you are the dice roller, you have to have something on the pass line bet. Okay? Pass line bet basically allows you to establish a point, which is a 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. And then once one of those numbers hit, you can put the payout odds behind it, which goes with your payout table behind. Okay? So, where's the other? You've left, left someone. She, she's on the front of the hall. She's coming right now. No, she's not. 
<laughs> she hiding it. All right, so to catch you up, this happened in 1997, the weekend after Valentine's Day. I'm with a guy that I work with named George. George's brother-in-law is in town. George's brother-in-law is the number one rose distributor for the entire northeast portion of the United States. He's got a lot of money. Okay, and we're going to play craps. So, Schroed of bones is the term he uses for rolling the dice. All right. So we go to a, an off-strip casino called Boulder Station. So we walk into Boulder Station, and the guy walks up to the craps table and drops about $10,000 down on the craps table to get chips. And he puts money on the 4, the 5, the 6, the 8, the 9, the 10. Okay? I'm up first to throw the bones. So, we're at the table for quite some time. Now, people in Vegas notice people who have money. The pit boss comes walking over to make sure that the guy who's telling us to throw the bones, that we're happy. Because Vegas knows one thing, the longer you stay at that table, the longer you're going to give them money. Okay? Meaning that your luck can't always happen. So the guy comes over after we're trolling the bones for a while, and he's up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little, but he's got a lot of money sitting on the table. So the guy, the pit boss comes over, gentlemen, is everything going well for you tonight? So the guy who says tro to bones, George's brother-in-law, says, hey, you got a piece of meat we can eat? Sir, we're hungry, pour some meat. Well, there's this large, steakhouse in Boulder Station, in which there's a long line of people waiting to get into the steakhouse. The pit boss says, certainly, sir, reaches in, because how many are in your party? Three of us. Writes down a little piece of paper, gives them, the guy is saying, horn high 12, and throw the bones, a piece of paper. Says, sir, you and your party, you can go right to the very front of that line. The maitre d' needs that piece of paper. They'll seat you immediately. Now, I kid you not, there's a long line of people waiting to get in here. We walk up, get a piece of paper. He also throws them a hundred dollar chip. We go, sit down, and the meal is free. So we all get serpent turf. We get steak and lobster. Pretty good meal. I'm like, this is fantastic. I haven't eaten like this in a while. So we go back out to the crab table, and we are throwing the bones. And this guy is betting, and he is betting big. And we're at the crab table. It's now coming up at around 10 o'clock at night. Pit boss comes back over to make sure everything is satisfactory. Pit boss asks, throw the bones, ma'am. Sir, is there anything else we can do for you tonight? Yeah, you got a car. You got a car means do you have a car in our language? Okay. Pit boss says certainly. He reaches in, pulls the same little thing out, writes down, says, sir, you and your party go right out those doors, right out in the front of the casino, right out here. And we do. We give the money to the person who's in charge of the cause. And they give us a Rolls Royce limousine with a chauffeur for the night. Stirrup's kind of going in style. So we had, back in the old day, we had car phones. This was something that was attached to the car. And there was also some people who had the brick phone. That was the precursor to the iPhone. That was like the iPhone negative 7,000. Okay? All you could do on that was call. So we knew that we were had a dance at the high school that George and I had taught at. And we knew that our friends Ed and Joe should be finishing up at the dance. And Joe was the guy who all always needed the neatest and latest gadgets. 
I will tell you that phone right there cost about four thousand dollars in the nineties. But Joe had one because he had to have it. So we call from our cell phone or our car phone to Joe's brick phone. Find out, hey, is the dance almost over? Joe says, yeah. He says, Who's with you? Well, Ed's with me. Hey, do you and Ed want to come out with me and George and George's brother-in-law? Yeah, where are you going? We'll be by to pick you up. Okay. Where should we meet you? Meet us in front of the school and find the coolest limousine you can find. Now, friends, a Rolls-Royce limousine is about the coolest limousine you could probably find. I don't know if you know about the car Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce is 100% handmade. Okay, it's a very expensive car. You may get the limousine version of it. It's a really expensive car. Okay, so we're like, find the best limousine that you can imagine. So that was the high school I taught at. I have a pretty looking high school, isn't it? Okay. And we're going to pull right up out front of the high school. And there's a whole bunch of other limousines out in front of the high school because kids are at the school dance and they all got limousines. But we roll up in our we roll up in our Rolls Royce limousine. We're like, this is fantastic. This is wonderful. So here comes Joe and Ed. They're like, hey, to get into the limousine, we take off. Driver, the chauffeur says. Gentlemen, where would you like to go? Take us to the stratosphere. Stratosphere is the tallest building this side of the Mississippi. Okay, it's fourteen hundred feet tall at the very tip, tippity top of this needle. It's a beautiful vantage point when you're in here that you can come up and you can look out all these windows. And down here is where the casino is, but you have this elevator that takes you straight to the top. So we walk in and we explain to Joe and Ed, hey, you're going to be asked to throw the bones. What does throw the bones mean? It means roll the dice. Oh, okay, we got it. So we go walking into the stratosphere. We walk up to the next craps table. So the guy drops about $25,000 down on the craps table. Tells Ed, throw the bones for me. The guy puts money on the four, the five, the six, the eight, and the nine, and the ten. Meaning anytime those numbers hit, this guy gets paid, okay? But this guy starts doing something that he started at before. So basically, let's say he had $500 on the four and the four is rolled. So if he had, how much did I say? 500? 500. Let's say it's $500 on four he puts down. The four comes up, that wins $1,000, okay? But then he says, press the bet. So it takes the $500 bet, takes the $1,000 of winning, on that four, and now makes it fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so he's pressing bets, and he's winning. Well, the same type of gentleman comes over, pit boss, got a nice suit on. Gentlemen, are you all doing okay tonight? Oh, we're doing wonderful. Is there anything that we could do for you? Because again, that pit boss realizes this guy who's wearing the worst outfit in the world with a gold medallion dancing around in his chest hair, has a lot of money. So the guy looks at him and goes, hey, you got some rides, sir? The top, the top, there's rides. Yeah, there are rides at the very top. Okay, these are, this is the very top. So you have this ride that you sit in these little things and this arm swings out, you have about 1,300 feet below you, and it spins you around, and you have a roller coaster. This doesn't have a roller coaster any longer, but it used to be a roller coaster. And this is called the Big Shot, which you have four people per side, and it springboards you up, and then you come bouncing back down. They're kind of intense rides, because you're way up off the ground. So we get the rides for free at the Stratosphere. Oh, that's kind of cool. So we all get done with the rides. It's coming up on midnight-ish. Maybe a little, maybe closer to one. Where to, gentlemen? Well, there's only one place you can go when you have a Rolls Royce limousine. There's only one place. 
we got to go to Caesar's Palace. Now, Caesar's Palace has about 36 different ways to get into Caesar's Palace, but if you're in a Rolls Royce limousine, they have only one entrance for you. And that drops you off at the high rollers part of the casino. Part of the casino with the people who have a lot of money who don't want to be with the common folk are at. Right. So I go walking into Caesar's Palace and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I look over at the roulette wheel and there is Sir Charles Barkley as well as Dennis Rodman playing roulette. I'm like, dude, this is amazing. Now I had met Charles Barkley a number of times because I grew up in Arizona. Um, great thing. I'd never met Rodman. I'd seen at actually uh, about six years before this, five years before this, I was dating Kelly Westfall. Kelly Westfall, her uncle is Paul Westfall. Paul Westfall was the coach of the Phoenix Suns when Charles Barkley was playing on the Suns. And I taught Kelly Westfall how to ski, and Kelly took me to see the Suns and Bulls play in a regular season game, and we had floor seats. And I got to sit on the floor and see, I got to see Scotty Pippen, I got to see Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Kevin Johnson, Mark West, Scotty Pippen. I got to see all those guys play. Dennis Rodman, his feet, when he would jump, his feet were like as high as the ceiling. He was the number one rebounder in the NBA. I mean, the guy had like, you know, averaged like one point a game, but he could rebound like 9,000 times in a game. No one could outjump this guy. But they're, they're playing roulette. The wheel, you know, you put a marble in, this, in the wheel and it goes around. They're over there. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Well, that's where the roulette table looks like. That's where Dennis Rodman and... Sir Charles Barkley are playing our life. That's pretty cool. So then we uh, walk up to the craps table. Okay? So this is a large craps table. Now let me just explain to you on the craps table. Normally you have the stick guy. The stick guy is normally on this side of the table. And then you usually have a guy in charge of chips here, a guy in charge of chips here, and then you have a guy who's monitoring the chips. The chip guys are responsible for taking down people's bets who lost and paying people <laughs> whose bets have won. And we walk up to this craps table. And I'm at the very far end of the craps table over here. But there's somebody over here that I look up and I thought, oh my gosh. Now let me just please describe this to you. Please don't, don't judge me. This woman had blonde hair. She looked like she had things done to her to make sure there are certain body parts that were certain ways. The largest piece of material on her outfit she was wearing was probably the tag to tell you how to wash the outfit. Okay, you visualizing? So I'm like, just like, I'm like at the end of the table going, oh. George starts tapping me, stir up, stir up. Do you know who that is? I'm like, uh-uh. It was Pamela Anderson. Now, George is looking at Pam. George is looking at the gentleman next to Pam. He goes, dude, it's Tommy Lee from Motley Crue. So he's looking at Tommy. I'm looking at Pamela. They're married at the time. This is before he beat her up and, you know, that's all that thing. I'm not, he was a bad person. But... So I, I'm seeing this across the room, and I'm like, dude, Tommy, I love crew. And Tommy said this to me. Tommy and I are having a conversation. I'm the person who's supposed to roll the dice next. So Tommy says to me, shut the blank up and roll the dice. I had a conversation with Tommy Lee. I mean, come on now. That's so cool. So... We are rolling the dice. We are winning money. That's Pam and Tommy. And shut up and roll the dice. I didn't put the explicitive in there for you. But you guys can figure that out. If you don't know what it is, that's the person sitting next to you. So that's kind of cool. We're in Caesar's Palace. I just saw Charles Barkley and Dennis Rodman playing roulette. And I'm at a craft table that Pam and Tommy are at the opposite end of. I mean, like, this is magic. I'm like, dude, yeah. Yeah. This guy is betting like crazy and winning money like crazy. So we get into the limo. It is like 3.30 in the morning. Gentlemen, where would you like to go? Take us to New York, New York. Why not? We're going to New York, New York. 
So we walk up to the craps table. We walk up to the craps table, and there's nobody at it. I mean, the casino's starting to die down. 3.30 in the morning, it's late, late, early in the morning. So we get to the craps table. There's no one there except for the dealers. And the guy with all the money who's telling us to throw to bones. Says, How much to secure this table? Pit boss comes over, sir. Hey, how much? No one else. Sir, if you put $30,000 down on this table right now, you can have this table by yourself for 30 minutes. Meaning no one else can come up and gamble. So they partition off the table. This is our table. Okay? It's my time to roll. My goal when I roll is to roll a 4 or a 5 or a 6 or an 8 or a 9 or a 10. And he presses bets. And he presses bets, meaning if a bet wins, he puts the winnings on top of it so the winnings become more and more each time that hits. And my friends, again, this is the payoffs of the crafts table. I rolled 31 times in a row, a 4, a 5, a 6, an 8, a 9, or a 10. This is amazing. So here comes this really fancy looking guy in a suit. He's no longer a pit boss. This guy actually has a large bulge underneath his jacket because it is a very large gun to make sure that this guy who just won a lot of money doesn't get mugged. We walk over to the cashier's table. Cash in all those chips. The cashier says, sir, I need somebody else to count these chips as well. So someone comes from the back of the cashier, they count the chips as well. They talk to each other and they say, that's the number they got. He won $243,000 just on my roll. Okay, the likelihood of that happening, of me rolling the four, the five, the six, the eight, and the nine, the ten, 31 times in a row. I think I did it back on the thing. I think I said it was a two thirds chance, so two thirds raise to the 31st power. You have a better shot at getting struck at li by lightning four times. Okay, it was the most unlikely roll, but we leave. We're done. The sun's coming up. <coughs> we go home. I didn't get any of this money, but I got steak and lobster. I had a Rolls Royce limousine. I got to ride all the rides at the top of the stratosphere. I got to be in the casino when Charles Barkley and Dennis Rodman were like 20 feet away from me at the roulette wheel. I had Pam and Tommy opposite of me. I partied like a rock star is what I'm just basically to tell you. And the funniest thing is, we get back to school on Monday, and we used to only have one lunch period, because the school I taught at only had like 1,200 students at it. We had one lunch period. And the teachers used to eat in like the teacher's lunchroom. And we're telling the story, and there people thought we were had the new gospel truth. I mean, people were flocking, you know, calling people from other schools to have them come over. I mean, they were floored that this night happened. So. The moral of the story is, if you find somebody who's a big enough dingling to spend that kind of money, and you don't have to spend anything while you're with it, <laughs> go see what Vegas is like for a night. Because I will assure you that story was fantastic. And that is my real life math adventure, not related to our math content, but huge probability statistics problem for you. If you wanted to see what... Uh, yeah, there's the sun. Rolls Royce, boom, we're out. So, watch this. Ready? We're gonna go here. Nope, I'm gonna go Desmos. Desmos. If I go and I do two divided by three in parentheses. And I raise that, whoops. And I raise that fraction to the 31st power.
probability of that taking place? One, two, three, four, five. So move, take those away. So it was a 0.00034% chance that I would have rolled it that way. And that's crazy. So, hope you like the Pam and discretion.